Hello everyone, I'm Caroline and welcome to my home on the hillside here in Wales and I've got five projects today that I want to show you and I'm really excited about making them. For this first project I've got a vase which is yellow, completely the wrong colour and I've got this, it's a clothesline which has been waxed apparently and it will cost me a pound in a charity shop or thrift store and this was sent to me by a lovely viewer so I now have some of this thick rope that I want to use ro nautical rope I think they call this and I've also got a jar this is the remains of my white chalk paint it's rather thick but I'm hoping that, that means I'll only have to put one coat on this bright yellow to hide it so I'm going to start by giving this a coat of paint So that's the only bit I'm painting. Now, when I finished making the video, I'm going to paint inside the vase, but I just don't have the time at the moment. So we're going to leave it at that and carry on. So the next thing I'm going to use is my nautical rope. I love using this. I tied a knot in the end last time I finished because this can start to come unraveled. So I'm going to get my scissors and cut this at an angle. And now we're going to go to the bottom of the vase and start by putting the angle facing upward from the bottom and that way then when we come around for the next layer it won't be such a stark jump. So now out with the glue gun, let's get glue in. And now you can see the transition is just a little bit smoother for having cut this at an angle. Now some people love doing this and some people hate doing it and find it really tedious. I'm in the camp of I love doing it. I find it so relaxing and calming and so fulfilling as well. Just how quickly you can cover something to look really expensive and high end with just a bit of rope and a glue gun. And now the same thing with this white rope. And I've thrown the end onto the floor so that it can untwist and unravel to its heart's content and not twist the main body of rope and have it all unwieldy. Now I need to join this shoe. Difficult to get a good join, but we'll give it a try. And now, just carry on to the top using the white. You don't have to change colour, or you can change colour more often and make it stripy. It's up to you, it depends what you enjoy. Always make sure you like doing your craft and you're picking colours and materials that you like. I think that's quite important when it comes to fashion too. They may say, oh no, whatever colour is out this year, you can't use that. If you like that colour, you go ahead and use it. What gives you pleasure is the most important thing. So I've decided to change back to the original rope colour. I think it's going to look really lovely. So now I'm just going to glue this little gingham heart onto the front. I think that will look gorgeous. Now I dread to think how much it would cost to buy something like this in somewhere like Kirklands or in a garden centre. And it has cost very little. It's got all the satisfaction that you made it yourself. And once I picked all the glue spaghetti off, it's going to look fabulous. Right, let's see what this looks like up on my display. this project as you can see I already started and I forgot to turn the camera on so I'll tell you what I did I've got this pickle jar and the lid I've taken the lid off and glued a little glass bead to the top it's quite a large glass bead really and I put a bit of spackle or polyfiller in the top to hide the hole I know it's not hidden yet but it will be and I've got this riser which you may have seen before it tends to feature on a lot of my projects and this time I need to paint it blue so I've mixed up two thirds of royal blue acrylic with one third white chalk paint. It's sticking really well. I think I'm going to get away with one coat. I hope so anyway, because that's something that slows down every project is the drying time. So when I'm with my quick and easy ideas, I try not to paint if I can. And now I'm going to paint the lid. Now this will probably do a better job with a primer, but I don't have one, so we're doing without. I think this little gingham heart is going to look fabulous on there 
it's going to tie it in with the other project I did too so let's get some Aileen's tacky glue on the back so now I'm going to make a small raffia bow by wrapping this around my fingers a few times tying it with another piece of raffia and I'm going to glue that with some hot glue into the centre of the heart When you finish painting, one, you may have had more time and been able to put thinner coats on and several of them, or you could rub this down with a very fine sandpaper. I haven't got the time today. I'm going away for a couple of weeks and I've been working like mad to get all my videos ready before I leave. And so that is why my latest videos are so rushed. So now up with a hot glue when I'm going to glue this. I always run out of glue just when I need it most. Oh, it just feels like that sometimes. Now I glue my jar to the riser and then it's just a case of screwing on the lid. Now you can use this to hold whatever you like. I was wondering what it would look like with some shells inside. Let's have a look. Now I don't have many shells to hand. All my shells are put away in a box. I've shown you these and I think that's a lovely look. So let's go have a look what this looks like up on my display. having one of those days today I've just realized I forgot to turn the camera on again so <laughs> we'll carry on from here and then you'll see if you can guess what I'm making so I've got this red charger plate from Walmart and I'm gluing some of this yarn I got it from the charity shop it's quite fluffy and thick and chunky but it's not the chunkiest yarn in the world so it is taking a bit longer than if you got one of these super chunky ones I'm gluing around the outside first that is the most difficult one to do I think trying to get it all lined up and once you've gone around once you go around again and again and again and again now I don't know if you have projects that you start and think oh yes I know what I'm doing this is going to be great and then it turns out to be not so great well I'm having that problem at the moment I can't get this yarn to fluff out enough to cover everything so I'm going to change tack I'm now going to switch to my white rope and I think that'll be much better, much neater and also much faster. So let's see how that goes. So this isn't going as well as planned as you can see, but there are a few ways that I could have done this differently. So just if you're going to try it, you know, if you paint the underneath the same colour as the top, that will help not have all these little bits showing. You could now paint this rope with whatever colour you wanted it to be, even if it was white, and that would hide all the gaps. If you stick with me on this project, you'll see how it finishes up. And I think the rest of it is going to look pretty good. So now I'm going to glue this piece of wood on the back of this plate. Seems like a weird thing to do, but you'll see why in a minute. Now I'm going to glue this into the centre, but I want this to have some wood through because I'm going to glue something onto it and I don't think it'll stick very well to the nest. So now we go like the clappers and get loads of hot glue and pop the nest in place. And now I want to stick this heart, but I don't know whether I'm going to be able to get enough contact. No, I've decided as much as I love that, it's not going to work, so I'm going to stick this polystyrene one in. Look at all the bits of nests everywhere. <laughs> well, I've got this piece of paper here. It's only on a nine inch piece of paper and so it isn't long enough to cover completely, but that doesn't matter because we're going to be adding some florals to the outside. So now I'm just going to use some tacky glue and pop this onto the line underneath the home just to give it a little bit of distinction. I do have to apologise for this mess on my desk. Look at it. That nest is shedding everywhere. And I'm going to give the bottom a little rub with sandpaper just to smooth it off a bit. So now we just need to fix this to the home sign. I put a tiny dot of hot glue there. Seems a bit weird, but then I know where the top is. And I'm going to hot glue this onto the back of the plate. And then we're going to attach it to the home. So my plan is to have these pieces of rope coming up here and I'm going to staple this rope to the back of this sign to make it really strong. So now it's out with the hot glue. I'm 
glue on my florals. And in a last ditch attempt to try to make this look a little better <laughs> because of the disaster, I'm just going to put some florals on this corner here. It's not a complete disaster, but I am disappointed that this white rope was so dirty on the inside of the packet and this really didn't work. I needed to have used a thicker yarn. Hmm, I think I'm going to recover this by using some of this rope. Now I'm going to glue this on and hopefully it will look a million times better. Well, I do think that other than a few gaps around here where you can see the original red plate, and this needs a bit of reweaving, it's not too bad. Oh, I think I've redeemed myself there. It's not a complete disaster. <laughs> right, let's see what this looks like up on my display. So this is another quick and easy craft. I've taken the back out of this picture frame. I've got rid of the glass. I don't want that. And I'm going to use this beautiful tile. Look at that. Can you see the dimensions on it? I'll take this off. It's still on from my last project. I forgot it was there. You see that? Look, it's absolutely stunning. It's Mark Suspenser's home hand-painted wall plaque. But we need to put it inside the frame. So to get started, I'm going to use this piece of paper I cut. I needed to cut it eight inches by eight inches to fit the frame. And I'm going to stick it on with some scotch glue stick. Before the paper dries, I'm going to cut out with a very rough square, making sure not to go outside the area where the tile is going to be. This would have been easier if I'd done it first, but I forgot. <laughs> Might as well confess, because I don't want anything as heavy as this plaque hanging on a bit of paper that could tear away from the backing. So now I'm just going to put a ton of hot glue down and then put this centrally onto my piece of backing. Now I think this colour goes perfectly with this picture. When I put this inside now it's going to wobble about a bit because it's designed to have that piece of glass. So to make up for the width of glass I'm just going to put a piece of twine all the way around the outside. You want this on top of the frame, not on the edge of it, if you see what I mean. You don't want it sticking further up, you want it sticking out towards where the glass would have been. So now we need to pop this into the frame. And look at that for an easy and fabulous looking, expensive, high-end looking picture frame with a gorgeous plaque inside. And it's preserved all the three-dimensional look of this plaque by not putting it behind the glass, but actually having it right at the front of the frame. So let's go have a look and see what this looks like up on my display. So for this craft, I'm going to use this bit of driftwood. I've got some of this twine. This, this, Well, it was a nautical rope. I've already taken one of the plies off this. It's now two ply. And I've worked out how far I want this to hang down. And I put these knots here. Then I've split the two plies into two single plies. And I'm going to come down to this end here. Tie a knot. Pop a little bit of hot glue and tie another knot on top of the hot glue. That should make that nice and secure. And I love knots in rope. I'm not quite sure how short to cut those, so I'm leaving them for the moment. And then come over here. Now I'm not going to put the knot around here, which would make the same distance between knots. 
I love the rugged idea of having this going around the thicker piece so you've got an even thicker, a wider gap between the two. Not one side, a little bit of hot glue and another knot. Well, excuse my mess up here. Look at me, I'm very messy. I'm always like this. I start off with a clear desk and by the time I get to the end of five projects, you can't move. So I'm just going to make a little bit of a display in here. I don't want anything flashy or bright. I want everything in greens and natural looking. So I think this one is definitely going there. And I could put a little bit of something coming behind. I think I'll glue those there and then put that succulent on. The longest one first and then the shorter one at a slight angle put my finger protector on because I don't want to burn myself push it there and now stick my succulent on like that now this is going to be hanging in that direction the way you can see it so let's have a look what else I can put on Oh, that would look lovely there, wouldn't it? Right, so I need to take the end off, but leave some of the rest on to glue it to the branch. Hot glue all down there, and then pop it into place. Hold it for a couple of seconds, and we're done. I think this will look lovely dangling there, so I'll just hot glue that into place. This is so easy. You can't get it wrong. You do what you like. Well, you can't get hot glue where you don't want it. I'm famous for that. I'm cutting these even though they're joined, so they don't lie properly if they're joined. So by cutting them off, I can get them to sit better with where I want them to be. And I think I'll have one coming upwards. want to overdo this I am tempted to leave it just like that let's have a look what it will look like if we put just a few other little bits and pieces on hmm I think maybe something up there yeah I'm just going to put one of the succulents up the top I'm going to use a bit of brute force and make a bit of a hole in the wood there because I think it'll give it a better chance of sticking as you can see, this wood is so well worn, you certainly don't need a drill for this sort of thing. Pop some hot glue in there and push it in the hole I've made. And now I think we're going to need to have just a little bit of foliage hanging down. Cut that big blob off the end. Mm, maybe shorter. So now I'm going to cut these mm, probably the same length as the other ones and leave them that long, I think. Again, this all just personal opinion. It's what you think looks good. And I just love that. It is so simple, so quick and easy to do. And look at that. I think it's beautiful. Let's have a look, see what it looks like up on my display. Well, what a messy craft day this has been, but I have had so much fun. We had a disaster that I think I almost averted. It still could improve a little bit, but I'm happy with it the way it is. When you think how bad it was before I fixed it, it's brilliant. If you've enjoyed this video, then please give me a thumbs up and it would be great if you could subscribe and come along on this journey with me of finding out all the gorgeous things we can make from things we pick up in thrift stores, charity shops, car boot sales and the odd full price item. But not many of those. I love a bargain. I'll see you all next time. But until then, don't forget, have fun. Bye. Mm -hmm.